You're listening to the SmackDown Rundown on the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Welcome, welcome to another episode of the SmackDown Rundown here on the Anger Marks Podcast Network. Yes, yes, it is I, the one and only Nikolai, and I am joined once again by my co-host, Jordan Garber. Well, you think about it, Jordan Garber joining here again on the SmackDown Rundown, the man who once worked for HB Radio, once interviewed some big names in the wrestling business, and of course, the uh, host of JGW on AngryMarks.com, Jordan Garber, of course. Glad to be back again. How are you today, Nick? I'm doing well, and you're also the co-host of the Thursday Night AMP, correct? I'm the co-host of the Thursday Night AMP, and I got an interview up on Wednesday with LD Global Podcast, and I'm interviewing some more big names, hopefully in the near future, so, man, I'm on a roll lately. You are definitely doing big things on AngryMarks.com and wherever else you're at. I mean, I keep seeing all these updates from you, and you're doing, it seems like you're doing well for yourself, so uh, congratulations on everything that you're doing over there. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And, of course, congratulations to you, too, because I've listened to the past SmackDown Rundown episodes, even the first SmackDown Rundown episode. I've been going back in the archives, man, because that's how much of a fan of AngryMarks.com I am, and I have listened to some pretty good and, of course, entertaining episodes of the SmackDown Rundown. So I'm looking forward to making another great episode with Nikolai and, of course, the producer here again. This should be fun. That's right. Shout out to producer Killer Kev holding it down. As always, producing his shows on AngerMarks.com and all the podcasts on the site. So without further ado, let's get this podcast underway and talk about this past episode of Friday Night SmackDown, which will be on Friday nights for another Two months as of yesterday, um, just for, as of this weekend, two months from now, SmackDown will be on Thursdays. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that's going to change the landscape of the blue show. Um, think, thank God TNT moved <laughs> to Wednesdays because um, if it wasn't for that, then uh, they, they would be pretty much, uh, that would be the nail in the coffin. Well, TNA made that preemptive move to Wednesdays when they first heard about SmackDown possibly going to Thursdays, which at this point, who knows what TNA's future is right now, because this next episode that they're going to have might be the last on Spike TV and no announcement has been made for their future airings. So, you know, while TNA is struggling, WWE is uh, WWE struggling as well. But more so financially because of the whole network and not getting enough subscribers and losing pay per view uh, buy rates and all that other stuff. So TNA WWE Network. Much, well, like before I let you finish, TNA kind of reminds me of all these waste of money they spent their money on all these big names they don't need. They kind of remind me of they're kind of like the Allen Iverson of professional wrestling. Pretty soon you'll see them doing little shows in front of ten people and then won't have enough money for a hamburger. So. Uh, hopefully TNA doesn't go to that level because they're just throwing money away right now. It's just pretty much they're grabbing a $20 bill and flushing it down the toilet. Well, it's, it's funny that TNA moved to Wednesdays, and now they're probably going to have to... Who, who knows what happens in the future? They, they still haven't made an official announcement, like I said. But when SmackDown moves back to Thursdays, which is official, that means NXT and... WWE superstars will also move to Wednesdays on the WWE network, which, as I was mentioning before, WWE is hurting a little financially, so they made the network free for all of November, including Survivor Series, which is the very first time that a WWE pay-per-view is available for free. And All right, go ahead, sorry. I was just going to say, unfortunately, a big chunk of WWE's fan base still does not have their WWE network, and that is the UK, which, ironically, that's where WWE was this whole week. During the European tour, they broadcasted Raw and SmackDown from Liverpool, United Kingdom. 
Well, you think of it that way, too. And, of course, I go on this rant every week for November so far. But I'm, you're going to shake your head again. But just because I'm not here to not encourage you guys to get the network this month, but all you're doing is saving 10 bucks. For example, I went to the grocery store the other day to get a bag of Doritos and a case of Mountain Dew, and that cost me $10. But think of it this way. You're saving 10 bucks, and you can get yourself an extra bag of Doritos and Mountain Dew. So $10 is $10. I guess saving money is saving money. So just put that in mind. And like I said before, you can use the 10 bucks that you're saving for November and buy yourself some snacks or pizza and watch Survivor Series for free. Exactly, just like I should have done on the way home because I should have um, got Doritos instead of, well, sometimes my mom's nice, she's a nice person and goes shopping and she gets me chips, but she got me the old Dutch ketchup chips, which are just the two bags, so I should have just went right to the grocery store after work and wasted more money on Doritos, so I should put that in mind also, but hey, I guess chips are chips, so I, let's pretty much focus our, our mindset on wrestling instead of snacks. But I'm looking forward well, to discussing that. Well, this past episode of SmackDown was definitely snack worthy because you could just sit back and watch a really good show that they put on in Liverpool. See how I did that segment there? <laughs> Brought it right back to the show. <laughs> but the show started off with the highlight reel. Chris Jericho made a guest appearance because he was already in, in the UK for his tour with Fozzie, so it made sense for him to show up and do the highlight reel and have Triple H and Stephanie McMahon, a.k.a. The Authority, on as guests. And, of course, the UK crowd was chanting, Where's Our Network? during both Raw and SmackDown and some of the house shows as well. And, it's just, like I said, it's just very unfortunate that the UK, a large chunk of the audience the wwe universe as they say doesn't even have the network and they're broadcasting it did you notice that they had to cover up the apron or change the apron from wwe network to wwe live did you notice that i did notice that and when i first saw that i was like that's kind of weird like just the way you see like i don't know because it was like wwe live that's for live house shows that's for live events and it's kind of weird seeing that on TV for the first time. So that was kind of cool to see. Yeah, it's just they didn't want to rub it into the crowd, which I understand. And it's it's a bummer, really. That's it's really all much I can add to it. But getting back to SmackDown, Jericho basically talked to the authority. Actually, let me rephrase that. The authority, mainly Stephanie, started off by saying that they love to interact with the universe and they, they push the superstars and divas to do their best, which is what Vince is doing to them, trying to push them to doing their best. And, you know, they're like, what would Superman be without Lex Luthor? What's the sun without the moon? What's WWE without the authority? And of course, Jericho, ever the popular superstar, decides to get the crowd interacted and just Completely mock the authority in the process. Yeah, and uh, you obviously know that coming into that segment, Chris Jericho is going to crack some jokes and have a good time. So, uh, yeah, I, I like that segment personally. Like, I like how it went. I thought it was really entertaining. And that's, that's the thing is that Chris Jericho at the age of 40, you think he's 40 or whatever, he, he can still perform at a high the high level he can and still continue to provide entertaining matches and, of course, entertaining segments. Right. And Triple H had heard enough of all the mockery and the jokes and said that at Survivor Series, they will be the last people laughing. And what I've noticed with Triple H lately, especially being in this role, is that I think he's he stammers a lot in his promos. He I think he loses his track a lot of the times because he repeats the same word or the same sentence over and over again. And let's just call it a theme. His theme of the night was acceptance, saying, I don't need your acceptance, Chris. I never needed your acceptance. We don't need anybody's acceptance. We don't need the acceptance of anybody back there. And we don't need the acceptance from the crowd. You know, he just repeats himself and repeats himself all over again. Have you noticed him doing that lately? I have been noticing that, and it's like, 
your point is. Like, that's what I feel like saying when he says that. Like, we know we don't need your acceptance. A lot of people think that way. A lot of people live life without people thinking of their acceptance. I'm not going to... I'm not going to go to work or I'm not going to go out somewhere and I'm going to say, oh, well, I need all of my friends, all of my family's acceptance. Like, you don't think that way. You just go out and do things as long as you're not an idiot. So, like, I don't, I didn't really get his point there. We don't need your acceptance. That's pretty vague. Yeah. Well, Triple H finally got to the point saying that a Survivor Series team authority will win. And before he left, he got up in Chris Jericho's face and really brought it home to... Y2J saying that uh, next time he said you need to keep that in mind next time you pick up the phone to call me asking to come back here and get your fix of your chance from the from these puppets and you know your fix of the universe your fix of wrestling you know next time you call maybe we won't be so accepting you know there, there comes that word again coming back full circle to end the promo yeah, exactly. The same thing with the whole accepting and acceptance, and it's like, oh, it's giving me a headache. <laughs> well, Chris Jericho wasn't phased by that because he led the crowd into singing, na 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 na, hey hey hey, goodbye, and you know the crowd was chanting that loud and proud to the authority, hoping that they get the last laugh. Well, that was funny, and like I said, Jericho could always perform. And uh, entertain us at uh, the still very high level that he can. So, uh, well, uh, pretty much, I'll make my case in point. A perfect way to open up SmackDown, and a perfect opening segment, and great way to just pump you up. Definitely. Um, Bray Wyatt had the first match of the show, completely squashed Sin Cara, as you would expect, and he started off talking about Dean Ambrose, saying that. He knows about Dean and how Dean screams for help and all the lonely nights he wanted. He was feeling unwanted and unloved every Christmas morning, wake up, praying his daddy comes back and all this other stuff that he's just completely pushing his buttons. And of course, Ambrose just has had enough, comes out and why continues to play the mind games It's like, you know, you're predictable. Every time I want to see your shining face, all I have to do is push buttons, pull strings, and out you come filled with rage. Dean Ambrose got in one punch, Wyatt left, and continued to antagonize Dean. And just the way Ambrose was pacing around in the ring, just unsure of himself, is this feud has gotten a whole lot better. Most definitely, and I like how... Uh, Bray Wyatt, Bray Riot. Yeah, that, that's a, that's the perfect. That's uh, that's not the name. It's not Bray Riot. It's Br- Bray Wyatt. But <laughs> case the point is that he's doing a great. He's always doing that great job. He always does that good job to get heat. And like you said, when you talk about sensitive topics like family in a wrestling storyline, it's kind of cheap heat. But he did his job most definitely. Bray Wyatt's doing a fantastic job as a heel, and it's going to be really interesting to see where this goes and. This is getting really entertaining so far. This may just be better than Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose feud. Uh, well, I might have to disagree with you on that. I think Seth Rollins and Ambrose was a a little better feud, in my opinion, because of the rivalry Very they good. had. This this one is definitely like on another level with Ambrose getting mind games played on him, and we saw later on in the show that. He was being interviewed backstage and got just completely attacked by Bray Wyatt, who slammed him into the wall with the sister Abigail and just sat down, put his head on his lap and says, this world wasn't meant for people like us, Dean. Once they put a label on you, that's their way of putting you in a box. And once they get you in that box, the next one will be in the ground. I don't know about you, but... Well, I know about you. I know you have good notes because you just memorized everything the man said. That's awesome. Well, it comes with the territory on uh, being a host of the show. You gotta, you gotta come prepared. You gotta come prepared, and man, you're uh, you're doing good. You should uh, get a promotion or something, or something. That would be awesome. Like, but like you said, like Dean, Dean, like I like that whole one of those scenes is like where it's in all seriousness. Those are one of those scenes where. You have, uh, it makes you cringe, kinda, by the whole, oh, this is intense. So, I, I enjoyed it. Like, I didn't enjoy Dean Ambrose getting, getting his head put into a wall. 
uh, maybe he took, I don't know if he took a bad bump or not, but point case in point is that it's just Bray Wyatt's doing his good job as a heel. He's getting his heat. He's doing his job times two. He's doing a fantastic job in this feud. Speaking of being heels, Adam Rose, he's turning into quite the heel because he lost this tag team match along with the bunny to the tag team champions, which in all due respect, if you lost to the tag team champions, there's no shame in that because that's why they're champions. But the bunny was tagged in. Adam Rose wanted to come back in. The bunny decides to go for top rope splash. Stardust blocked it, hit the dark matter, got the three count and Adam Rose just did not help him. Then hit the finisher with the party foul right on him. And he's just, I don't know where this is going is because is Adam Rose turning into a heel? Because as soon as the music starts, he's back dancing with the Rosebuds as if nothing happened. Where is this going? Are we going to get Adam Rose versus the bunny now? Number one goes down. Melvin Gordon goes bananas. It's all ahead in your college football minute. College football news. That's awesome. I want to give a shout out. Go Kentucky. They're an awesome team. Go Wildcats. Anyways, going on, uh, Adam Rose. What do you think? I think that he is going to become a heel, but i it's kind of weird how he's doing it. I think it's a slow transition to a heel, if you know what I mean. It's, he's kind of like, but what you saw on Friday is maybe that's his full heel thing, and maybe his whole party mob is, are going to become heels as well. His All his robu- rosebuds are going to be heel as well as himself. Well, I, I guess apparently, according to uh, college football news, the bunny is number one. And the the whole rosebuds go bananas, Melvin. So, you know, it's it's crazy on on how a mascot is getting more over than the superstar. And I wonder if that was intentional or if they're just feeding off the WWE universe, cheering more for the bunny. Which the commentators are full blown saying that it's a grown man in a costume. So you know, it's we're not stupid, and they don't intend us to be. But anyways. I, I really don't know where they're going to go with this. Well, it's hilarious because WWE became so PG that they have to bring a mascot into the picture to entertain the children. Come on. Yeah, because Adam Rose himself isn't getting over. He's not getting over. Vince McMahon doesn't think he's getting over. And of all things, you're supposed to get a huge pop, especially with the gimmick. There's all these rosebuds. Probably more people are paying attention to how attractive these weighty rosebuds are because they are, have been. They're bringing in a bunch of hot dancers and from the independent scene, actually, of which some used to be all, rosebuds in general. A lot of them were interviews of mine before, which is awesome. Point being, still, is you're bringing in a bunch of attractive women as rosebuds. You're bringing in other rosebuds from the independent scene. You got your rosebud. You have Adam Rose. And the crowd doesn't care. So either the crowd's stupid, which they're not, or Adam Rose himself is not getting over. The Rosebuds are fine. It's just Adam Rose who needs to pick it up. You know, it's it's funny. Um, you mentioned how WWE's PG now, but yet they put the most attractive big boob Rosebuds up front with Adam Rose dancing to the ring. You see the girl in the cheetah pants? Like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> this is crazy, but... I'm, not, it's a, I'm just having fun here on the SmackDown Monday. Do you see the girl with the cheetah tights? Oh yeah, like, I, I noticed. Oh. But this is the thing: like we're I more interest, know. we're more interested in talking about the rosebuds than we are of Adam Rose. I know that's the problem. But exactly. Like, I don't know who that was, but uh, I don't know. But she's, I, I think she has a big future ahead of her because I kind of recognize her. She's a good worker. Another good worker um, who was a rosebud once was is Tessa Blanchard. I don't know if you heard of her, but. Um, she has big things planned for her future. So, yeah, it's kind of weird how um they bring in all these rosebuds and they all look like party girls and, like, they're not even, like, you're supposed to pay attention to Adam Rose, but the fans are more concerned about the rosebuds. That's the point. Even, no matter how attractive the women are as the rosebuds, you're not paying attention to Adam Rose, the main subject. That's That's wrong. Adam Rose needs to work on that. Well, I said it last week, and I'll say it again this week. Adam Rose fits more in NXT than on the main roster. Good point, good point. So, we move on. Let's talk about the Divas match, which was surprisingly longer than I had expected. And I'm not saying that as a negative thing towards Divas matches. It's just that I didn't expect anything out of this match. Layla versus Natalia was literally a back-and-forth match with 
a lot of uh, a lot of pinfalls near uh, just Summer Rae was at ringside. Natalia slapped her through through Layla into her, got the sharpshooter for the win. Like I said, I, I wasn't really expecting anything out of this match. It was better than I expected, but it's you know it's still a, a good Divas match to have on the show. Oh, most definitely. And I, I like you look at that match between Layla and Natalia, and they're both good workers. They both of them actually put on a very good match. And Natalia, I'm not surprised. She is always a great worker in the ring. But Layla to step her game up, which who's she's also a good, respectable re- women's wrestler. She's been getting better. Uh, it's always good to put those two in the ring together because those are divas that can actually wrestle. Exactly. So I had no problems with the match. It it broke up the monotony of of everything else going on. But you know, it was it was still decent to showcase on the show. Natalia is is a very very good wrestler. Um, her attitude I can't stand, but maybe that's just because I watch Total Divas, so I just don't really care for her when she talks. But when she wrestles, I can easily watch that. Uh, I don't watch. I watch Total Divas sometimes. It's on E. I don't really pay attention because, to be honest, like I have a life outside of wrestling. I don't watch all the all like the shows. I like if you if Total Divas is on E, I'll watch it if I'm not busy, but. I, I never really caught up with it. I don't really know what's going on with the whole show. I, I heard, I did see an episode where, Net, where uh, TJ, also obviously also known as Tyson Kidd, bought Natalia a treadmill, and it's like, why would you buy a girl a treadmill? <laughs> I know, and that that's a, and that, and that's the thing that we, 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 we that's not planned. That's that's not planned. That's planned. You oh yeah, no one's gonna do that on, by accident. You don't. Do, he's not stupid to do that to a woman on a. You can just tell it's planned. Well, yeah, that that's obvious. I mean, that that was they were told to do that. But the the problems with Natalia and TJ, aka Tyson Kidd, is chronicled on the show as much as it is on WWE television, and we see this on Raw and SmackDown. Now, we didn't see that this week on SmackDown because Natalia had her own match, and Tyson Kidd surprisingly had a match on SmackDown. Even more surprising, he was involved in a triple threat match. Even more surprising, it was an elimination match for the Intercontinental Championship. What's not surprising is that this was the best match of the night, best By match of far. best match of the month, best match of Ziggler since he's been Intercontinental Champion. It was Ziggler defending the Intercontinental title versus Cesaro and versus Tyson Kidd. Triple threat elimination match. Go watch this match. No exceptions allowed. You have to see this. It was phenomenal. It was amazing. I recommend all of you wrestling fans around the world go on YouTube.com and just search TJ uh, TJ Tyson Kidd versus Cesaro versus Dolph Ziggler in a continental title. Uh, search it on YouTube. Watch the match in its entirety. You will not, it will not, you will not waste your time at all. The match was a fantastic match. It's probably going to be a match of the year candidate. I would have to agree with that. I mean, it was, it was just excellent. I mean, the crowd chanting, this is awesome, probably five or six times in the match. We saw the Savzaro swing. We saw the very European uppercut. We saw a, a sharpshooter. We saw an awesome Tower of Doom with Tyson Kidd doing a sunset flip powerbomb to Cesaro, who was giving Ziggler a deadlift superplex. I mean, wow. We also saw uh, both Tyson Kidd had the sharpshooter and Cesaro had the crossface on Ziggler at the same time. It was, like I said, like that match is a match of the year candidate. Uh... There's no complaints at all. That match was probably one of the best matches I've ever seen as a wrestling interviewer and as a wrestling fan. And definitely one of the best matches we've had in months. And Ziggler put on a hell of a performance by outlasting both men. He hit the zigzag on Cesaro first. Tyson Kidd threw him out the ring, covered for the three count. So it was down to Kidd and Ziggler. Tyson Kidd hit the swinging fisherman's neckbreaker, suplex, whatever it is, and got a near fall. Ziggler super kicks him in midair. Tyson Kidd puts the sharpshooter on him. Ziggler rolls through, hits the zigzag, gets the three count. Incredible. 
You might know that's about Dolph Ziggler. That he wears Jeff Hardy's old boots. Yeah, they're pretty similar. They're pretty similar, but, like, sidetracking, like, that match, like, that's what wrestling's about right there. Oh, yeah. And I can't wait to see more of these kinds of matches. This is the kind of matches that I, I just love to watch. Oh, of course. I loved it. Competitive and finish, at, you know, with a finish and not like a disqualification like we had in the main event of Ryback versus Corporate Kane. I thought this match was <sighs> decent for what it was, but it was just brawling punches and kicks and there's nothing wrong with that because everybody has their own style but I was really expecting more out of Kane and Ryback um, we got maybe one suplex out this whole match we had uh, one running drop kick by Kane got a power slam by Ryback but it was mostly punches, kicks and clotheslines oh yeah, mostly punches, kicks and clotheslines, I can agree with that Kane with a few uppercuts, Ryback with an elbow, a splash. You know, that's that's what we were going to get. But Kane hits... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, Kane hits him with a steel chair to disqualify himself and try to hurt him. And, yeah, that wasn't a very nice thing of Kane to do, of course. But he's a heel, so... But did I lose you guys? No, no, just I thought we lost you for a minute. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm still there. I'm still on the line. So I, I just heard a moment of silence there, and I thought, oh, I, I, I don't know if they lost the line, but it's all good. Um, but yeah, uh, in case in point, Kane did use the seagull chair on Ryback, and of course, Ryback did fight back. And then, to end off the episode, Ryback stood face to face and stared down Triple H. So, it's kinda, kinda a good way to hype up, uh, the Survivor Series match, and of course, I predict that Ryback's going to be with Team Cena for Survivor Series. Oh yeah, definitely. They're trying to build up his stock again, and they're finally they're they're actually doing it right, doing it good. He's most likely going to be in the main event on Team Cena, just like Luke Harper will most likely be on Team Authority, as we saw this past Monday night on Raw when he threw Ziggler down at the Authority's feet, who were sitting at ringside. That I forgot to mention, but you did mention that Ryback was face-to-face with Triple H to end SmackDown. So I thought that was a nice little tease and uh, leave us wanting more for Monday Night Raw. Exactly. And it, it makes that's, that's what wrestling's about. You know, you have that ending that makes you want to tune in next time. That's what wrestling's all about. Tune in next week. Tune in next week. Tune in next week. Tune in next week. And that episode did it for me, uh, especially near the end. So... Oh, yeah, I'm looking forward to Raw, and it should be a really good show. I would have to agree. So, that's it for SmackDown. Um, Really, nothing much else to add from the whole show, because that's what we got. But I like the the build-up for the feuds of Bray Wyatt and Dean Ambrose, and Team Cena and Team Authority. Again, I have to reiterate, go and watch that triple threat elimination Intercontinental Championship match. It was the best of the night by far. Oh, I loved it, and I'm looking forward to next Friday on SmackDown. And of course, after two months, it will be now be on Thursday, so that's going to be an adjustment, but I'm looking forward to it. It should be a good show next week. Exactly, and that's in two months, but in one week is the Survivor Series pay-per-view for free on the WWE Network, of course. But I, uh, are you excited for this pay-per-view? Oh, most definitely. I am looking forward to Survivor Series. Of course, it is the Thanksgiving of professional wrestling, and I am looking forward to it. It should be a good uh, main event. And, of course, if you're on the WWE Network, you can watch the past Survivor Series. If you go far back, you might catch some Survivor Series featuring interv- uh, wrestlers I have interviewed as well, as well of course. So I'm looking forward to this Sunday Survivor Series, and I recommend to you fans of the WWE Network to pump yourselves up, watch the past Survivor Series, I don't care if it's 2006, 2007, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. It's going to be a good pay-per-view, and I am pumped up for it. Definitely, and uh, as always, you can uh, 
go on the network and watch past Survivor Series pay-per-views, as as Jordan Garber mentioned, or even anything else in between. Hopefully, they get the situation settled in the UK because we've got some fans and friends over there that they need to get their network. They need it. And think of it this way, too. Canada, WWE Network... We're not living in a cave. We're right below you, America. We're right, sorry, we're right above you, America. We don't need, we have to have all the content, uh, content America has. I don't get it. Oh, America has all of the content and we don't. If I bet the WWE Network and I don't, I can't watch past pay-per-views, for example, let's go random. Judgment Day 2004, I can't watch that. I have just wasted $10 for six months because the stupid CRTC decides to limit my content. So, I want to, if I'm getting the WWE Network, I'm going to do my research to make sure it has everything on it that it it does and it says it does, because that's what it's about. The WWE Network is a library of professional wrestling tapes from the top promotion in the world, WWE, and of course, the companies it's bought, ECW, WCW as well. So hopefully, when I, if I get it, I have all everything I want on it, or else I'm not going to be a happy guy. Yeah, and, and the network just aired ECW week, uh, all week, including uh, ECW Exposed. They added 47 new episodes of ECW TV, awesome. and it's it's really a shame that the UK doesn't have it right now, and, and Canada is only limited. Yet you got all places all over the world that pretty much have the full content. It, it's like I used to say, WWE, get your shit together. Oh, exactly, and that's the thing. And like I'm not here to rant on about the whole limit CRTC. It, it's a, it's a, uh, it's not nothing to argue about. It's just an honest thing. Is me as a buying customer and me as a wrestling fan, I should be able to get what I pay for and what they advertise. That's all I'm, I'm, that's all I'm saying. I'm not right. being a jerk or anything. I just want to get what I pay for so I can enjoy it as as much as everyone else is. Exactly, and and I completely understand what you're saying. For sure, and um, uh, um, of course, uh, there is ECW Week, which is cool because they have the old episodes of ECW Hardcore TV, which, if I know my knowledge, started back in 1993. So um, that's awesome to see. Uh, classic matches on there as well. So yeah, it, it's kind of cool how WWE came up with this whole WWE Network thing because it's probably the best thing that's ever happened to the company. And too bad that hopefully the sales go up with it. Because uh, it's pretty much, you don't have to go to a, a pawn shop or a flea market to get a rough and a WWE DVD anymore. All you got to do is go on the WWE Network and pay a low fee of nine ninety nine a month. So I think that's enough shilling from us for the network. And uh, what do you say we shilled the rest of the Angry Marks podcast network as we get ready to close out the show. So don't forget to take a look at all of our podcasts on the Angry Marks Podcast Network. That's, you know, the Raw Reaction on Mondays. You have Thursday Night AMP, the flagship show. Of course, you have the SmackDown Rundown every weekend. And you have all the other shows in between, including my including my co-host's very own podcast. So, Jordan, why don't you plug your show and give out your final comments before we close it out? I always love promoting myself. Anyone on my Twitter would know that. Follow me on Twitter at Jordan J. Garber. If you want to listen to any of the past interviews I've done, they are on WrestlingRoad247.com. JGW will be up soon, featuring an interview I have conducted with none other than the masterpiece Chris Masters. So that should be fun to see on JGW. And, of course, I got it. Negotiations. I did get asked to be on LD Global Podcast. I will be be interviewed by them. Tune into that. Just stay tuned on my Twitter on Wednesday evening or something. You should hear more about it. It's, it's going to be a really entertaining interview. It's like, and of course, just uh, follow me on Twitter and just stay tuned to the name Jordan Gerber. And I hope to talk to you all again soon. That's awesome. And make sure you check out angmark.com for everything else that you need for recaps, news, articles, editorials, and everything else we have available to you. That's going to do it for this week's episode of the SmackDown Rundown. For producer Killer Kev, from my co-host Jordan. Garber, this is Nikolai telling you we'll see you next time.